from Eddie King Gymnasium on the campus of the University of Charleston, located in Charleston, West Virginia, the Mountain State. It is University of Charleston basketball. It's not. not. And he'll go up for a shot. Contested by Reyes. Might have got a piece of it. Espinosa the rebound. Dag on. Espinosa might be working on a 20 rebound night. Here's not over to Faulkner. Open three on the way. Hit it. That's how you get runs, Pat. They post up Reyes down low. He finds Ross. Jump shooter right away. Hit it. A three ball for Brandon Ross. Williams in the corner. Now to Stanislaus. Ball taken away from him by Richardson. Richardson bounces up to Reyes. One dribble. He bounces it back to Richardson running the floor. Left hand up. No good. Ball was partially bought by Wilkerson. But Ross takes it away from Wilkerson and scores. This kind of passion leads to transition, which leads to buckets. Faulkner, open shot from the corner. Bench is standing. Dagger because Faulkner makes the shot. Espinoza, Charleston, turnover, empty possession. Outley on the crossover dribble. Finds a jump shooter. That's Humphrey, top of the key. Drilled it. Here's Odie against the double team. Boy, nice dribble. One still on the left-hand dribble gets away. <laughs> and as soon as I say that, he loses the ball to Richardson or to Humphrey. Now to Reyes, steps across. <laughs> And makes the layup. Richardson, they swing it over to Reyes. Reyes bounces in the corner or not. He quickly takes it. Now throws it back out to three for Fisher. In and out. Rebound slam by Reyes. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. You had a 10-day layoff between uh, December 3rd and tonight. And uh, what did you try to focus on in that 10 days? You told us in the post game at AB, you were very honest, which you are, are always honest. <laughs> uh, to but, a fault sometimes? Uh, I don't, I, that's, that's, that's up to you. <laughs> but uh, you, you said that you might want to change some things about maybe how you looked at the team or how you practiced or, or you know, just maybe that facet. What did you focus on in the 10 days, and were you able to establish that tonight? Didn't change a lot. I think, I think when, you, uh, when you get beat two in a row like that, you don't think that should happen. Um, as a coach, uh, you know, right after a game like that, I think you, you – your first, your first inclination is, I got to do something different. Um, you know, I think what we did add some things offensively to, you know, run a little bit maybe when we get a lead in a game or, or need to run some clock. You know, you don't want to really. It's it's hard to tell your players to run clock and still get a great shot and not attack. Um, you know, you end up taking a bad shot sometimes, and and we were trying to do that. Um, so what we did is we put in some things that we can run that just naturally run clock and well, we're still attacking. Okay. And then, um, you know, we worked a lot on situations. We had 10-minute games, 5-minute games, you know, 1-minute games. Uh, we did 10-minute games, when, you know, when one team was down 8, the other team was up 8, so we had to do some, you know, we just did a lot of situations, but we really focused on sharing the ball offensively, making the extra pass, passing up a good shot for a great shot, and then we, we buckled down defensively. You know, protecting the paint, um, really, you know, started just trying to hold guys accountable for their defensive effort and what they're doing defensively. And uh, we got better. We were better at it tonight. We shared the ball better tonight. We did a lot of things better tonight. Still got some hiccups. We still got some problems we got to fix. But then the other thing is we got to watch a ton of film, which, uh, you know, that's that's the equalizer right there. That uh, You know, you see it on film and... That just helps everybody get better because they see it and they know what's going on. So. Yeah, we were, we were prepping as you were making your way up from the locker room just how much tape you watch. Not that you watch more tape than any other coach, but you, you do watch a lot of tape, and you go see teams play. I mean, you've seen yeah. Concord twice now in yeah. that interim of 10 days, and if your team comes out and plays, I, I told the folks before you came up here, that's a great combination of your knowledge. And obviously, they play hard, and, and I thought from an energy, energy standpoint, and I always want to touch on this in every post game. I thought energy point that came out very well tonight. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Um, I I really thought, um, you know, I got on those guys at halftime because, you know, a lot of the buckets we gave up in the first half. First of all, we gave them I think eight or ten points by just throwing them the ball in that zone. I mean, twice we came down and threw a bounce pass to the wing, and they stole it and shot a layup. Um, you know, we just turned it over. We threw, basically gave them pick sixes, you know, four or five times in the right. first half. Um, and, and that equaled eight or ten of their points. If we turn it over five times, we're winning by six or eight points at half. So, you know, that, that bothered me. But then at the same time, you know, three or four times, we didn't guard something the way we were supposed to guard it in the scouting report. And... You know, we've been going over them for four days. We've already played them once. Um, you know, the second time you play somebody, you should have their stuff down. You should know what they're going to do. Now, they put in one or two things, too, because they've had a long layoff. But, you know, 
I was mad about that. I thought we gave up a three because we didn't guard a down screen right. Um, you know, we gave up a couple baskets in close because we didn't get through a screen we knew was coming. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that bothered me. So if you take away those two or three things and then take away the pick sixes we gave them, you know, we probably have an eight, ten point lead at half, and we were tied. So, you know, um, we still got to get better. We're still not there where we're supposed to be. But like you said, the energy was there. We got better. We're doing a lot better things. The mistakes were a lot less than they've been in the past and uh, in the in the past two games, even in the in, in the past eight games. You know, we were winning and got the 6-0, and oh, but we still were making a lot of mistakes. And it's hard to teach when your guys are winning like that to tell them, you know, this is what you're doing wrong. So uh, we got a lot better. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the effort. We just need to continue to get better. We got some time off again. Michael? Coach? Even though the energy was there, as you indicated in the first half, there were mistakes being made. And for that first half, Johnson C. Smith shot a little over 58% yeah. from the field. But I thought there was a difference in the energy and, and just the the attitude of the team when you went to that 1-3-1 one, one zone, almost disguised as 2-1-2, two, two, but it was really 1-3-1. One, one. Yeah. About three, four minutes left in that first half. You turned Johnson C. Smith over. I think I counted three out of six possessions. They did get two open shots, including yeah. a three-pointer out of Parks. But it just seemed like there was a little bit of a change in the intensity on the defensive end as a result of that. Is that what you were trying to do, mix it up a little bit? Yeah, we wanted to mix it up. We wanted to throw a different look at him. We just, we've been talking a lot in the break about, um, you know, there's so many teams in this league that have two or three Parks. You know, two or three guys that can really score. And we just want something to break rhythm. Um, you know, we, we're trying a couple different things. We just used that one defense tonight, that 1-3-1. One, one. Yeah. Um, but we're trying to do some things just to break a little rhythm. And I think it did. I think it broke that rhythm. And, you know, I'm such a man defense guy, and I want to play man all the time, and I want our guys to, you know, get, get so good at our man defense that sometimes when – we do go zone in a game. Our guys know that I really don't want to play it. So, you know, we've really tried to get our guys to buy into, hey, we need something else to throw at somebody to break tempo, to break, to get somebody out of rhythm. And uh, they, they did. They bought into it tonight. As a matter of fact, one time tonight, after they got an offensive rebound out of it one time, we, it was a timeout called, and we, they came to the bench, and I wanted to change defenses. And usually it's it's opposite. When I try to go to a zone, they say, "No, coach, we just want to guard them." Well, tonight they were like, "Hey, let's let's go to one three one again. Let's let's do it again. We'll do it right this time." And and we did. And then in the second half, we came back to it, and it helped us a little bit. We got a rebound better out of it, but uh, it did. It broke their tempo a little bit. Speaking of rebounding, what are your thoughts on Eladio Espinosa? He really did a job inside. In your post game comments down in Charlotte, you, you noted that Johnson C. Smith's big guys. While they have some size and strength, not a lot of athleticism. Right. And Delonta Boyd played, I think, almost 32 minutes. He only averages 24. And he's a, he's a big man down. Yeah. Down. But he was just out man, and a lot of, a lot of that had to do with Ladio Espinosa. Yeah, he kept a lot of balls rebounds, alive. 18 rebounds, 11 of those on the offensive end. Yeah. Well, just to poke a little fun at him, probably three or four of those were his own misses. But I'll let, you know, that's okay. <laughs> we're going we're to let that first minute just slide. <laughs> he was going for a double-double in the first two minutes. But, hey, we've been, we've been working with him really hard, too. He's been a little down, you know, uh, um, just for the fact that, you know, he came in from Marshall. He played at South Florida. You know, he's played in some pretty big-time big, big venues, and he wasn't putting up a lot of numbers, and he expected to. And, um, you know, so he's been trying to find it a little bit. And what I've been telling him is, you know, you got to play like you're mad. You got to play like you, like, you know, um, like you got something to prove. But that animal instinct's got to come out, and uh, you know, be active, be relentless. And I and I think he did it tonight. Um, you know, he was he was all over the place. There was times he was a little too cool. A couple times that last possession, he should have had a dunk when they. It was a, a offensive rebound, and the ball was on the floor, and he should have picked it up and had a dunk, and he kind of went after it soft, but. Um, you can't fault his effort. I mean, 18 rebounds, um, 18 points. We've been really working with him, keeping the ball high. He likes to bring the ball down and make himself, you know, 5'11", basically, and not six foot eight or 9". And tonight, a couple times, he really showed he got the hot rebound high, went back and finished it high, and we just need to get him to do that all the time. And, you know, he was a lot better tonight. And we need that. I mean, he can be dominant in this league, and he can play inside out and, 
you know, in the past we've had big guys that couldn't really guard on the perimeter. Well, he can guard on the perimeter as well, and um, he can do a lot of things for us. He's just got to play with that energy and that effort every night. Marcus Knott, the coach, the national Phenomenal. Na, na, uh, sorry, national stats came out uh, yesterday, and he's just outside the top 20 in assist to turnover ratio, 2.8 to 1. He had seven tonight and only two turnovers. Uh, talk about his uh, progress just from last year at this time in December to a year and uh, just talk about his game tonight as well. You know what I, you know, I knew he was going to be a lot better this year, just being in the system for a year. You know, he gave us five points, four, re three rebounds tonight, seven assists, only two turnovers. But the most impressive thing about him is I think he really guarded Parks well. Yeah. Um, you know, I I thought he made Parks work for a lot of his b baskets. Um, you know, we tried to pick him up earlier in the in the possession, so Parks had to work a little bit harder to, to get his shots uh, than he did the first time we played him. And, you know, he missed some free throws tonight, which I think, you know, hurt him because he was tired. And, uh, you know, I think he, him and Phillip both did a good job on him. But then, you know, Marcus just, he's running the show. He's not turning the ball over. He listens to me. Uh, he does what we ask. And, and uh, you know, we need to get P.O. on that same thing, but he's coming. He's going to get there. P.O.'s a little bit different player, but Marcus was just phenomenal. You know, him and Eladio tonight were the difference, and uh, they, they really helped us. They, they, were the, they were the MVPs right there, both of them. Even though Marcus didn't put up as big a numbers, uh, he did a he did an excellent job tonight. Really happy with him. Coach Mark Downey is joining us after UC's win over Johnson C. Smith, 73-66. Next game, Coach, here at home, 4 p.m. Saturday. Game you can see and hear right here on ucgoldeneagles.com against Concord. What have you seen out of Concord? I think you've seen them a couple times, obviously, live. What do they have to offer that folks can hear, see, or actually come out to the game, which you would prefer on Saturday? Uh, really, really, really score it. Um, Kent McBride, new coach. Ken McBride, excuse me, new coach. Uh, has done a good job at getting players and fusing them in with the guys that are back. You know, they've got Acre Emanuel, that one of the leading scorers in the conference last year, but he's he's their second or third leading scorer now. Wow. Uh, Neely, a kid by the name of Neely, is the other wing. Uh, they're bringing him off the bench, and he can really, really score. And then uh, Willard, uh, the kid that's been around, seems like forever. Yeah. Um, he's shooting the lights out of it, over 50%. Yeah, so we they've got guys that can stats. really score. Starting yeah. a freshman point guard. Um, you know that that's a good player. They brought in a couple big kids that are really helping them. Uh, they're they're good. Um, they can really score the ball. We we saw them Saturday and they scored 58 points on UPJ in the first half. So um, you know they can really put it in the basket. We're gonna have to be you know we're gonna have to slow them down a little bit um, and, and and really keep them in front and contest the shots. Do a great job defensively on them and then rebound the ball. They're doing a pretty good job of rebounding it. So uh, they're a lot better. And we need to be better, too. But we've got some time here to take care of academics and take a day off and get right academically. Uh, and then, you know, a couple good days of practice. And uh, we should know them pretty well. As you saw, you know, you're getting into the season now where yeah. you can get about seven or eight tapes on everybody. And I've seen them play a couple times. So, um, you know, we should be prepared for them. And uh, it'll be fun. It'll be a good game. They get up and down and play fast, and so do we. So it should be a lot of fun to watch. Coach Mark Downey, we appreciate you coming up after the game. Charleston wins 73-66. Coach, thanks, thanks for your time. Guys. Thank you, guys. Talk to you guys on Saturday. Have a great night.